My name is Phil Weber, been with Beekle Stone for a little over three years now, and today's presentation is on outdoor living made simple. So here's a just a group shot that they took in 2015. Um, can anyone, everyone see the, the screen pretty clearly for the most part? So if anyone was kind of wondering where the ZZ Top singers went, and we did hire a guy. No, I know. <laughs> I was just joking. So, um, no, but, uh, you know, pleased to be here. We value our relationship with Hedberg very much. And uh, hopefully, you know, you guys get something out of this presentation. If there's questions, you know, feel free to, to ask, okay? So, uh, Buchel. No, Beekle. <laughs> we get it butchered all the time. Um, so, this Beekle. Uh, Beekle Stone, we are a multi-dimensional stone provider, which means that we do um, masonry veneer products, thin and full. We do landscape products, many of which you're going to see at Hedberg, and uh, also cut stone. So we do a wide variety of cut stone products, and I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, we are an industry source for stone knowledge, been in the business for over 50 years, and uh, yeah, nice looking family right there. This is uh, Tim Beekle on the far right. Scott Beekle and then Ma Beekle. Uh, Ma was one of the founders, and the neat story behind this is Ma and Pa Beekle, the original founders of Beekle Stone, literally bet the farm to start this business. Uh, we still have the note from the bank, and uh, some of you who've been to Rock College in the back know this. They have a list of everything that they had to give to the bank as collateral uh, 30 pigs, a manure spreader, you name it, it's all listed to buy their first stone splitter to start this business in 1964. So, you know, and people say, bet the farm. These, these people really did. So it was, it's a pretty cool story. So a little bit about Beekle. Yeah, it's founded in 1964, family run and operated. We are now in our third generation. So we have Mike Beekle uh, and Scott Beekle running the business. Tim retired last year. Um, we grew within a 250 mile radius of the original Chilton Quarry. We now have two manufacturing facilities, one in North Carolina and one in Chilton, Wisconsin. So um, we are growing and adding more quarries to our offering, expanding our, our products and our resources. And uh, we now have over 170 dealers throughout the US and Canada. So here's a quick snapshot of our facility in Chilton. We have the Chilton Manufacturing Facility, and then the saw shop. And both of these are under 20 years old. So very new, you know, modern facilities. Uh, we have three CNC saws in here, uh, five axis, which can do multiple things uh, with, with cut stone. And I'll get into that in just a bit as well. Um, and then this uh, Chilton Manufacturing Facility was built in 2006. So very new, modern, uh, and we're constantly looking at upgrading and adding. So. Uh, not sitting still. So uh, here's our, our territory map. Um, uh, Steve, you know, kind of gave you my territory, but uh, I also cover all of the western half of Canada. So it's a pretty vast territory. And um, has anyone ever been to Vancouver? A. Yes, A. <laughs> oh, beautiful. It, yeah, one of the most gorgeous places I've been to. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good territory and I, I really love being here in the Twin Cities. You know, it's a very close drive for me compared to the rest. So, um, pleased to be here. Uh, a little bit more about us and our products. The vast majority of what we sell, Chilton Fond du Lac Mill Creek material, which is coming out of the Niagara Escarpment, which is this vein of stone right here. It stretches from the Niagara Falls area, goes up through Canada, over into Upper Michigan, and then down to where we are in Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, has anyone been to the falls? Yeah, a couple people. So the same stone that is under the falls is what we're quarrying in Chilton, Wisconsin. So if you've been there and seen the pressure in the water running over it, it's the same material that we're quarrying out in this area, Fond du Lac, Chilton, in that, in that vein. Um, so we also opened three quarries in North Carolina as well. So the little shot of the Blue Hills uh, that was last year that we added uh, a few more quarries to our, our offering. But we are a global source for stone. So we bring in material from Europe, we bring in material from Asia, we bring in material from Canada, and we bring in material from all over the states along with our quarries. So we have a, a lot of different resources for you to utilize. So 
So our vision is to be the customer's first choice because of unparalleled service. Unparalleled service, some of these people in the back have been to uh, Rock College. So we actually bring in our dealers to our quarries and do trainings. Um, it's a day and a half training where we go through the quarry, we go through the, the manufacturing facilities, we talk about the marketing, we, we talk about the designers, uh, the design um, studio that we have in Fond du Lac. So we go through a lot of detail on how we get the product from the quarry to the finished product. Uh, we also have a live chat on the website, so if you guys are looking for information, uh, you can't reach someone, we do have a live chat right on the home page of our website for immediate information. We always have someone on from 8 to 5 or 7 to 5. Uh, marketing material is at no charge, so any samples, you know, we have some cut stone samples up here, hand boards back in our booth over there, um, anything that's marketing related, brochures, architect binders, it's all no charge on us. So we provide that for our dealers and any customers that are looking for information. Uh, we also do QR codes on all of our handboards, um, just something small. So if you have a QR code reader on your smartphone or tablet or anything like that, um, it'll take you right to the website, show you pictures of projects that we've done with that material. Uh, we also do color coding for all of our veneer products, um, and that's based on cost. So you can get an idea of what range the product is going to be in. And then uh, we also give project leads to all of our value dealers. So from time to time, I'll feed Hedberg with project leads that I find on the, on the website, our sources that we use. Um, we also provide architectural credit, um, AIA presentations as well for landscape and building stone. So do a lot of that. So we also have a, a tremendous selection of natural stones. So a lot of the quarries uh, in this region have this square of color. You know, the golds, the grays. And what we are striving for and what we've added goes from the light reds all the way down to the black blacks. So we try to cover as much color as possible with our offering. And you'll see that in some of the literature. So this is just showing you some of the different cuts and styles that we do here. Full and thin veneer. And also, before I go too far, how many landscapers do I have here? Just so I know. Okay. Any masons? Okay. Awesome. Uh, any designers? All right. Okay. Any architects? No? Okay. Good deal. Okay. So our mission as Beekel Stone is to provide the best, most dependable experience in the natural stone industry guaranteed. Many can say it, but we like to prove it. So here's a quick video on a little bit more, uh, the whole process, the whole coring process for Beekle. So what you guys are purchasing from Hedberg as outcroppings or wall stone, uh, boulders, you see exactly how it's brought out of the quarries uh, and then taken into here, taken into our dealers.
on long-term environmental advocacy. Once the site plan is established, operations can begin by removing any dirt or rock that overlies the stone. The topsoil and overburden material is safe for placement into a berm, where it is covered, seeded, and stored until implementing the final reclamation plan. Once the stone is exposed, the material is removed from the quarry and benches, with the top bedding plate revealed. Cracks and seams running along the surface of the stone are used as indicators of existing fractures through underlying layers. A large amount of stone used for building and landscaping is formed in layers. These layers were created over millions of years in sediment beds. The natural top or bottom of a stone is called the stone's bed face. This term comes from the natural bed or horizontal plane of the stone while forming. Natural cleft describes the natural thickness of the bed, which typically varies from layer to layer. There are two natural faces that can occur along the vertical planes of layered stone. A natural split occurs where the stone breaks in the quarry at a location where there isn't a natural seam. Weather edge, which is sometimes referred to as rusted, occurs where a natural vertical seam in the quarry has been eroded and minerals are deposited on the face. Variations in the depth and intensity of colors and textures are also signatures of each stone's unique creation story. These beautiful aesthetic distinctions allow us to combine stone faces in unlimited ways to create product blends unique to us and our quarries. And here's where the process of stone removal gets even more interesting. In preparation for a selective, sophisticated blast, drill holes are placed along the perimeter of the bench behind the natural seams. The distance between the holes depends on the variations and physical properties of the stone at the location of the intended break. Although we employ the use of high-grade explosives, typical blasting is not of Hollywood proportions. The drill holes are calculated to accommodate a light explosive charge, just enough to help separate the layers and loosen the stone for manageable removal with the use of heavy equipment. to pry up between the layers and separate the stone. Stone slabs are extracted from the top down and then sorted and stacked on pallets according to general criteria, such as size, thickness, and color. Material that is thinly layered is hand stacked on pallets. It's best for the pieces to remain as large as possible throughout the removal process, so the stone can be used for its best potential. After all, we take significant pride and providing a full range of natural colors and textures that can be combined in infinite ways to achieve nearly any design, whether it be for building stone, cut stone, or landscape stone applications. Even with state-of-the-art production equipment, our technologically advanced specifying and design tools, the most detailed CAD shop drawings, and unparalleled service, story of Beagle Stone's exceptional selection of natural stone starts with a quarry. And there's Chilton, Wisconsin. Traffic is horrible. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> hey, Yo. So when you are setting off that charge, not like dynamite, it's more just to loosen and actually use the forks and the front loader to help. Pry the uh, pieces part. loose. If you bust it too much, Correct. it actually weakens the stone. Correct. Yeah, the t uh, if it's a blast that's too large, you actually get gravel. <laughs> so yeah, you have to, it's a, a light blast that just separates the layers. And then we can get in with our, with our forks, you know, find those layers in the stone, because it is a dolomitic limestone, there's many layers in the quarry. Find that layer and then ram the fork into the layer and then pry the pieces out. So that's how we are pulling out like outcropping pieces. So 
And the other two ways of loosening it up is either foam or cutting it, correct? Correct. Yeah, so we also use a, a, a slurry, like a dex pan. We'll put that in. Uh, it's an expandable foam. It'll, it'll harden, it'll compact, and then pop that layer loose. Um, that's another way we do it. Uh, other bigger quarries, um, like block quarries, for instance, actually use saws. And they'll actually have a big chainsaw type contraption that'll rip through the material and then take out huge blocks of stone. So, yeah. Yeah. Appears that there was farmland right next to that. Yes. And it's good black dirt next to it. Yes. Really? Yes. So, um, that's, a, that's an interesting point because a lot of farmers hate that uh, the, the stone is so close to the top of the top of the layer it's it's that there's not a lot of topsoil before you get down to the stone so it can rip up your equipment pretty quick but uh, yeah there's a ton of farmland in that area and a lot of different veins of stone so our nearest competitor is like two miles away not even so yeah and there's a lot of little pockets of quarries so yep so but yeah our 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 goal is to be the easiest stone company to work with if you're trying to find answers for your customer we want to be there to help you and get your, your answers very, very quickly. Uh, that is our goal. So again, yeah, we are a full service stone supplier. Handle everything from full veneer, thin veneer, cut stone landscape. We, we like showing this photo. You can see it on the banner here. Um, this, ho this home is actually using the same patio stone, uh, same uh, outcropping stone, and the same veneer stone. It's all Chilton material for all three applications. So some companies can't do that. Uh, natural stone companies like we are, uh, we offer all of this. You could even do cut stone if you really wanted to. Chilton is very difficult to do cut stone with, but we could do it. So you could do a, you know, a few different applications as well. We are also very environmentally responsible. Um, we process about 126.5 million gallons of recycled water each year. Uh, the only time we're losing water is through evaporation um, and 99.9% .9 of everything that comes out of our quarries is utilized. If we're not using it for landscape stone, if we're not using it for cut stone or building stone, it's then crushed into gravel. So we have local, local governments that will come in and purchase it for roadsides, um, farmers that will come in and spread it on their farms. Um, but yeah, I mean, almost everything is utilized. The only time we're losing that material is when we're sawing it. So that real when we're sawing that material, that's the only time we're ever losing that product. And that's uh, sometimes even crushed and thrown in the gravel pile. So we are very, again, very eco-conscious um, from the recycling of the water to the stone itself. The packaging is also recyclable that we use, um, following through with quarry reclamation plans. So uh, I brought you guys something just to show you a little bit about the quarry reclamation process. But before we even open a quarry, we have to find where the stone is. So we actually hire a geologist. The geologist will go out and then source where these where the veins of stone are, and then we get an idea of the colors, the quality of the stone, the depth of that that vein, uh, how much material we could pull out. But even before we open it, we have to say, okay, what are we going to do with it after it's done? You know, after we're done quarrying, we have to have what they call a reclamation plan, which is basically saying you're going to turn it into a retention <coughs> pond or a farm field somewhere where you, it can be utilized again in some way so what I did is I brought you guys a, a core sample from a geologist that's uh, near the Fond du Lac area so uh, just to see what we're pulling out of the ground and I'll hand that around yeah. so do you ever get complaints of dust flying from time to time yeah. <laughs> no. so this is a core sample from just south of Fond du Lac giving you an idea of the, the color the quality of the stone giving us an idea of, you know, what, what are we going to get into if we open this quarry? So here's, uh, here's the start of the presentation, outdoor living made simple, uh, getting into a lot of outdoor uh, living situations and what we first discussed as a team internally was you know what how do we define outdoor living you know what is outdoor living so um, we came up with it can be whatever the owner wants it to be providing that of course it's outside and it's a good deal of time spent living in it so you're outside 
living in that area. Um, what are your wants and needs? How do you like to spend your time outdoors? These are all questions that can help develop your definition of the outdoor living area. Uh, for these reasons, our definition of the outdoor living area include the following. A furnished patio, a dining area or kitchen, activity area, a swimming pool, fire pit, or place to lounge, and a well-designed landscape and garden area for, to add ambiance or some kind of setting. So that was what we kind of came up with. Uh, some information, I uh, did some research. One of the consumer research analysts noted that uh, the patio and outdoor living market continues to, continues to steadily gain momentum parallel to the improving economy and housing market. While the majority of Americans have some form of outdoor space, the living situation household income will determine what purchases and enhancements can be made. Further growth in the categories hinge upon the appealing to key consumer groups such as millennials, Hispanics, and in retirees. Entertaining and expanding these comforts and conveniences of the indoors to the outdoors are important motivators for category purchases which should be emphasized in marketing and non and in-store displays. Again, some more statistics just kind of give you an idea of what we're seeing. And this is what we're seeing in our business. We're definitely seeing a growing trend across the country for outdoor living spaces. According to a survey of respondents, the, the most popular special function rooms in the second quarter of 2017 across the U.S. accounted for 77% of selections of the most popular rooms. Home offices still made the top three, but popularity among consumers has dropped 50% since 2012. And that's what these graphs are showing you. Uh, the blue lines are showing you the changes in outdoor living. So, um, conversely, popularity of the outdoor living spaces has spiked 72% since 2012, when it was tied with mudrooms as the second most popular special function room. So the trend keeps rising as far as what people are wanting to spend their disposable income on. And a lot of it is going to the outdoors, developing that patio, developing that outdoor living space. And this, this graph is all about the Twin Cities. This is your market. You know, what are we seeing in the Twin Cities? Well, Twin Cities homes are selling faster than they have in the last eight years. Uh, the average time on the market is going down. So the quicker these houses sell, what does that mean for you guys? Usually within a year or two after that, they're you're looking for ways to spend their money and it's maybe going to that outdoor living space, you know, that patio that they want. Also home sale prices are continuing to rise. So the average home price is increasing in the Twin Cities. That's a good sign for your market. So in year to date home sales, you know, they're still very, they've been going up since 2010 and very, very close. Um, they were up about 5,000 home units last year. So it's a good sign for the economy in this market. So here's a picture of a patio. This is all Chilton material here. Chilton is going to have a lot of color, uh, but you have a Chilton patio here, Chilton flagstone. The Chilton stone is also here. So this is a tumbled product that we produce. Um, just giving you an idea of the look that you can achieve with the same stone. We also do pattern flagstone. So you have some pattern flagstone here, some pattern flagstone here. You can see a lot of pattern flagstone through Hedberg. Hedberg has a wonderful supply of pattern flagstone. Um, and then, you know, mixing brick, natural stone, you know, gravel, um, mulch to add different colors seems to be very, very popular. So just a little de, you know, design idea there. Um, but the nice thing is if we're doing a pattern flagstone like this, uh, your customer can customize the finish. So we do some neat finishes. We have about eight different finishes that we can put on a patio. So I brought you a couple samples here just to show you uh, some of the different finishes that we do so you can touch and feel uh, some of the different options that are out there. But um, if you're doing a patio, we typically want to see something with a little texture. So something with like a sandblasted finish, a thermal finish, a brushed finish, something that's going to be a little less slippery. So 
Uh, I'll hand out some of these samples just so you kind of see what we're looking at. These are just a couple of our stone options that we do in house. So, yeah, it shows you like, the brush finish, uh, sandblast and finish. selection too. Also in the middle of the sizing that you can get up to for some of the cotton pattern the limitations of the way the stone comes out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not, yeah we don't cover that in the brochure but that would be, yeah. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah with anything there is going to be a limit to what we can produce. So, but um, yeah, this is just, you know, ideas, ideas for what you guys can do. So again, you have pattern flex on this side, a mosaic pattern on this side, the nice fire pit. And on our, mm -hmm. or in our website, or on our website, we give you as much data as possible for the different options for stone. So we have the ASTM testing data, which gives you the density of the stone, the absorption rate of the stone. And why does that matter? You know, because if you're comparing natural stone against a concrete product, there's obvious differences. You know, there's going to be a cost difference to a natural stone, but you're going to get a, a denser product, you're going to get a lower absorption product, so it's not going to suck in that salt if you're throwing salt on the, on the patio. Um, it'll last much longer, it'll take that wear and tear much better. Um, it also gives you all these spec sheets, give you color, um, and then the size ranges as well. I know it's kind of blurry so you can't really see that. But yeah, it's all on our website so it helps you as much as possible with the questions that may come up. So, you know, best practices, you guys are the main, you know, you guys are the are the pros on this. Um, so I don't want to read through, you know, installing a patio. But, you know, we always do promote best practice. So the, the best practice for us is you know, make sure that you're putting time and effort into the base. You know, that's always key. So that base is the most important step. So whether you're using gravel or uh, whatever as a base, make sure it's, you know, pitched right. Make sure that you have uh, a good solid base for whatever you're putting on top of it. So here's showing you a few outcropping options, different sizes. So we have standard outcroppings here, you know, standard steps here, and then we have outcropping steps, which are a little more irregular. And our outcropping steps are about five to eight inches thick and can help you save a little cost. So for the right application, if you have um, something that is a project that's a little more open, um, this is going to be a little more irregular in shape, but it'll save you about 30% in cost. So it can help you, know, help you that way uh, instead of regular steps, snap steps. So the less touches that we have to do as a quarry, the less cost goes into the product. And here's another, another project where they utilized, they wanted the same stone on the retaining wall as they had on the house. So Chilton Rustic was on the house. They put Chilton Weathered Edge retaining wall uh, outcroppings and retaining wall stone on the, the base. So best practice again, if you're going up three feet, 
uh, we want to make sure we have at least uh, an inch of batter for every foot. So that's, you know, all the only thing that's holding this up is weight. So we want to make sure that you're adding some batter to the, the wall so it stays up long term. Also, if there's a wall like this, we want to make sure we have proper drainage as well. Uh, one of the new items that we added this year was our goldenrod outcroppings. So our goldenrod outcroppings, boulders, uh, just a more golden tone in general, coming out of the same vein as our Chilton and Fond du Lac material. Um, you know, ranging from anywhere from 6 to 22 inches in height, and uh, very, very consistent in height. So that's a nice option if you're trying to get something that looks like a bench or a seating bench. You know, that is a great product to use. The other thing I'd like to point out too with outcroppings and boulders, making sure that you have an idea of the weight. You know, these stone boulders specifically get very, very heavy. So an 18 by 18 by 36 inch boulder in our Chilton, our Fond du Lac, our, our Goldenrod, like I said, um, is going to average about 1,200 pounds. So you're getting some very, very heavy pieces of stone. So a much bigger piece, you know, 24 by 36 by 48 can get up to 4,200 pounds. You're looking at two ton of, of stone. So very, very heavy. We can get some very large boulders out of our quarries. So if you're looking for something unique, that might be an option. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is these, these boulders don't just come out in um, squares and rectangles. They're very irregular. <laughs> so it takes some time. If we have to sort, it's gonna add cost. So if you're trying to get within you know six inches I want something that's 18 to 24 inch in length, 18 to 24 in height, 18 to 24 in depth. That's going to take a lot of time to sort. So these come out of the quarry very irregular in shape. So, so that's something that you can do, which will help maybe overall tons. You know, if they pass for like say 12 to 24 inch depth, they'll understand the coverage and they might be a little less stone even though it's more, more expensive for tons, correct? Right? Correct. Yep, and we'll make recommendations. You know, we always, if we do talk about a project like that, we always talk to our sales rep. I know I've talked talk to Jeff quite a bit about it. You know, what can we do? Can we increase this spec a little bit? You know, can we get it up to 12 inches? So we have a little more play so we can find pieces because if it is a tight spec like that, it takes us a very, very long time to find those pieces. So, um, so can well. Can you explain what the definition of an outcropping versus a boulder? Um, uh, possibly heist, yep. heist and all that? Sure. So our, our outcroppings are typically anywhere from 4 inch to 8 inch and sometimes up to 12 inch. Uh, boulders are categorized by 12 inch and up for us. So if we have a product that's 12 inch or taller, we categorize it as a boulder. So hope that helps. That yeah, and in landscape terms, an outcropping could be an oversized piece of flagstone basically because mm -hmm. it's irregular like that, it's just thicker. Yep. So yep. how close are you getting the steps down and down? Then? What's the question? How close? You know, oh, um, you know, for the for the steps? Yeah. You oh. know, typically our steps are five to eight inch. Um, so, yeah. Is so that... Code, uh, stairs code, code is, is required three eighths variance? Mm-hmm. That's if you need to, especially in front steps, that's when you go with the snap. Yep. Steps and sawn and thermal. That's where you got to finish. Yeah. Coming so. in where they can hand pick the outcroppings, you won't get that. That's usually in the backyard where the specs aren't as tight. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, definitely we would recommend, you know, recommend sawing the material at that point if we have a tight spec. Uh, we're just not going to get that with a natural product out of the quarry. So, yep. Well, Good question. You, you don't mail them to get them right to the nasty food. What's that? You don't mail them. Yeah. Get them right on. What you're saying? Oh, it'd be pretty close. I mean, so if you're looking for something at six or seven inch in height, yeah, we would saw the back and then add a finish on the top to get that very tight tolerance. Yep. The rectangle steps, 18, yep. 18, or 24, 48. 48. 18 48. Deep or 24 yep. inches deep. It wouldn't be in the outcrop. They can't yep. do that in the outcrop. Yep. So again, just yeah, some of the specs for stone steps as well, irregular steps. 
yeah, our, our stone steps will come uh, 36 and 48 inch in length, uh, snapped. And then, yeah, if you do want something put on, definitely just, you know, contact one of the guys that you deal with, and we can, you know, look at adding a finish if you're, if you're looking for something specific, no doubt. So but that, yeah, that, that term outcropping always been there. Always called it. Yeah, we have. Yep. So yeah, some of the features that we see with a lot of outdoor living spaces, outdoor kitchens. So this is a photo of an outdoor grill area. You have the countertop. Now, if we're going to do a countertop, we want to make sure we're sealing the anything that's. Um, gonna be in contact with with food so I need someone from Hedberg to you know SRW is a great option do they have a food grade sealer for countertops pretty sure they do if not for SoCo sure clean yep and stuff that we've worked with with restaurants where they've had to seal it we did a um, redstone grill two of them where they got children up above the cook areas mm -hmm. and we worked and got a Prosoco product that was approved that would seal it Perfect. Yep. Uh, this particular grill has a rock face front, but you can do a bull nose front, a half bull nose front, a, a flat sanded front, more clean and contemporary. You know, just let us know what you're looking for, what you're trying to achieve, and we'll do what we can to help. I assume that that has to be a nice uh, bulk of crop around there. Yes. Yeah. Right on here. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Another outdoor kitchen area, cinnamon bark area, as the veneer here. <coughs> Pretty popular in this market. And then another outdoor kitchen area where they utilized uh, Mill Creek and Fond du Lac in panels, large, you know, large panel pieces here. But they also tied it to the house, so the house has um, the same veneer stone as the outdoor kitchen area. A few, you know, a few different outdoor kitchen photos. Yeah, another outdoor kitchen area here. Tumbled Chilton material. Uh, make sure the fire brick is installed properly with this particular fireplace. The, the smoke was billowing out the front instead of out the flue. So we want to make sure that we're doing that properly. Another outdoor kitchen area there. And then, you know, with an outdoor living space, we do see a lot of cut stone. So here is a cut stone video that kind of goes through our process. What do you need to do when you are looking at customizing a, an outdoor kitchen area? Um, yeah, countertop, patio, uh, caps, you know, anything. This will give you uh, some detail on, on, on the entire process there. Eagle Stone's commitment to industry-leading expertise unparalleled service and an exceptional selection of natural stone extends well beyond quarry boundaries and showroom walls. We set out to make our customers' experiences surprisingly easy and exciting every step of the way. From the outset of inspiration until each ornamental detail is fulfilled. The true brilliance of any great accomplishment isn't realized without attention to the fine points. So it's unfortunate that architectural stone details are all too often an afterthought. Sills, wall caps, coping, archways, keystones, door and window surrounds, balusters and columns, fireplace surrounds, hearts and mantles. These are just a few of the most typical standard and custom cut stone options for elevating natural stone projects to distinguish works of art. Because some of the most important decisions are made in the beginning of the design process, Eagle Stone offers assistance with the front end details starting in the early planning stages. And when it comes to fabrication, we have the knowledge, service, and state of the art production capabilities to produce an extraordinary variety of gorgeous cut stone options, all executed according to their project specifications. Once a client's vision is conceptualized in a drawing, our estimating department analyzes the plans and reviews the three-part specifications. The outcome of their efforts is a detailed, quantified list of specific materials, referred to as a material takeoff. 
This information is used to generate intricate piece-by-piece -piece shop drawings for on-site review by the mason, general contractor, or architect. Once the CAD shop drawings are signed and approved, order processing begins. Regardless of the material types and colors selected, Beagle Stone starts the fabrication process using solid blocks of high quality natural stone. We kick off the workflow by sawing these massive blocks into slabs of the exact thicknesses required. The slabs are cut to size and shape in strict compliance to their fabrication tolerances. Diamond blades, wire saws, routers, CNC technology, lathes, muscle, sweat, a keen eye, and accomplished skill set. This is just a small sampling of the ever-increasing list of resources at the hands of our cut stone fabrication team. Another important criterion is surface finish. If the intention is to showcase the raw beauty of a naturally occurring texture, the face of the stone can be left untouched. However, the surface texture of cut stone is often enhanced for aesthetic or functional purposes. Sign, honing, sanding, sandblasting, brushing, thermaling, bush hammering, rock facing, or any number of surface finishes are applied using whatever means necessary. Whether the project calls for programmable, high quality precision or the touch of an artisan, Eagle Stone has the technological means and expertise to optimize the process and achieve the required surface finish. Our dedication to high quality workmanship is resolute and that doesn't end with fabrication. We invest the time and care needed to ensure that each piece is properly packaged for shipment to the project site, whether for cut stone, building stone, or landscape stone applications. At Beagle Stone, we live by our mission to provide the best, most dependable experience in the natural stone industry, guaranteed. All right. So yeah, in our book too, we discuss some of the different cut stone options. We have over 20 flavors of cut stone. So, you know, with an outdoor living situation, we will make recommendations based on what you're you're trying to achieve. If there is a project that you're working on that uh, we feel that, you know, this stone probably isn't a good solution for this application, we're gonna let our guys know, you know. Um, So we do a lot, of, a lot of water features. You know, this is Centennial Park in the Twin Cities. Have you guys been, been here? No. Okay. So that yeah, that was Silverdale cut stone. Some of the Chilton stone as the as the veneer. Some photos of the water features. Yeah, running water off the little waterfall action, off and outcropping. Uh, St. Mary's material here. And then, you know, working with a pool. So if you are working with a pool, you know, one thing that we'll always ask is, is it a salt or saline pool that you're working with? You know, um, if it is a, a salt pool, you know, we want to make sure we know the distance between the water and the material. And if it is a pool coping like that, you know, we will definitely recommend having it damp roofed, you know, with uh, the proper sealer from SRW or Prosoco. So uh, we always, you know, we will make recommendations as far as stone that'll handle that better than others. You know, some stones are more dense, have a higher density and a lower absorption rate. So we'll make recommendations on, on that as well. But if there's a color that's locked in, you know, we'll rec make recommendations on, you know, having that sealed and the proper sealers. And then you have to deal with, you know, the proper um, sealer company's recommendations as far as how frequently they want to have it resealed. Below the, the cap there on the edge, is that, is that a tile? Is uh, here? Or? Right there at the water's edge. Right here? Yeah, just below that. that. Oh, yes, yeah, that is tile. Just tile. So, yep. Like a yep. Or, uh, uh, yep, yep. Correct. And this was our uh, chestnut stone here that was used as a pool coping. So, so what you're saying is you shouldn't put stone down into that water. 
Yeah, no, no. Yep. Yeah. Well, especially in our climate, yeah. you know, that's that's a danger. So, yeah, especially with a, a stone like chestnut. Chestnut is a southern stone, so it has a very high absorption rate compared to some of the the dolomitic limestones that we're dealing with, like Chilton, Fond du Lac, Mill Creek, that have very low absorption rates. This one has a very high absorption rate. So what they had to do here was they used a Prosoco sealer to seal that material. They sealed in all you know all six sides of the material to make sure that that would last long term, and then they seal it every five to seven years. So would they pop that in between that tile and the stone? Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right at the water. Down oh. Down. Yeah, right at that edge of that clock. I'd have to find out. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So a few other water features, hot tubs, pools, patios. Another product that we you know we do offer is irregular wall stone. Irregular wall stone will have uh, two different depths. You know, will have some um, more of a an irregular shape, but um, you're going to get about tw 18 to 20 square feet a ton on an 8 inch deep wall stone. 12 inch deep is about 15, 13 to 15 square feet per ton. Um, <clears throat> 15 inch deep, you're going to get you know 10 to 12, and an 18 inch deep is 8 to 10, and it's it's very irregular. So you're going to get a lot of these different sizes within the pallet. Uh, again, it's going to cost you roughly 30 percent less than a, a traditional snapped wall where you're getting consistent heights. So this is going to be much more irregular. So just another option for cost savings. Again, we have our stone specs on our website, so if you're looking at wall stone, it's going to grade it out by size, um, the colors, the coverage per ton, the part numbers, the geology of the material. This is Mill Creek, uh, Mill Creek, uh, snap wall stone. And for our regular retaining walls, you know, machine cut or split to depth, we have a 6 inch, an 8 inch, and a 12 inch depth graded by height, so we have a two to three inch height, three to four inch, four to five, five to seven, and then a three to five um, as well. And then new to Hedberg, last year we introduced sawn wall stone. So back where Jeff is standing, we have some of our sawn wall stone material and then the yeah, out front here. So uh, we do that in a three, six, and a nine inch height, sawn height. So again. Split face and bed face, right? Yep, material. yep. So split and bed, so you're getting a little bit of both in the mix. A little more color, but also saves on the labor cost for sure. You know, putting that putting that together. So for a six inch six inch deep wall stone, you're getting about 28 to 30 square feet per ton. Eight inch deep, you're getting about 18 to 20, and then 12 inch deep, you're getting 15 to 13. Again, and you know, rule of thumb is um, three times the depth is the max height that we can do. So if you're looking at an eight inch deep wall stone, uh, 24 inch high with an inch, two inches of batter would be what we'd look for. So some fire pits, that's also another key characteristic of outdoor living. Now, uh, when dealing with fire pits, what are people typically doing when they're enjoying an outdoor fireplace or fire pit? Yes. Can you catch? Drinking beer. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of drinking that t typically goes on, you know, when you're you know, around a fireplace. So, the hotter that fire gets, if you're if you're you know just pounding them away, throwing you know logs into the fire, the hotter that fire gets, the the greater chance of cracking with the stone that's near it. So that heat can really affect the stone. So especially with our climate and the freeze-thaw cycles. If we're doing this, especially in the early spring or late fall, where the stone is still acclimating to the temperatures, um, there can be potential cracking. So, yeah, just monitor that heat, you know. So, just something to point out. So did you do any of that CARE 11? Uh, CARE 11 uh, outfit or patio, did you get any of that job? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, same same job though that we have on our banners here again. 
the Chilton stone, Chilton outcroppings, Chilton veneer. You know, a lot of different design opportunities. Um, you know, mixing natural stone with concrete, with metal. You can do some really neat design with uh, a lot of different elements. You know, pergolas, natural stone caps. Some other options here with uh, Chilton Rustic and then Silverdale. And then different blends. We can create different blends with our veneer stone to change it up and, and make something more unique as well. I got a question. Sure. Where do I find customers who want to pay for this? <laughs> 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 Oh boy, have to do some searching. <laughs> but yeah, I should I should mention though that over the years our costs have actually gone down some because of automation. So years ago, uh, we used to have guys on chop saws just sawing the material, and the cost per square foot was very very high. Over the years with automation, our costs have gone down, and we reallocated those those gentlemen to different areas. Um, which actually helped quite a bit, you know, into putting them as a splitter operator, a quarry operator, a loader operator, wherever they are, you know. Um, but yeah, that actually helped our costs pretty dramatically. Um, typical lead time, though, for something like that, you know, if you do a custom cut stone project with a rounded cap or you know something like that, it's typically going to be anywhere from the four to six in four to six week range uh, to produce. So, and that'll typically involve the drawings, you know, having you sign off on the drawings, uh, you know, everything purchased through Hedberg, and then running back through us, and then putting in a production schedule. So, so we are, you know, we're embarking on some new technology now. Um, we are very, very heavily educated, you know, or, uh, very heavily uh, involved with Chief Architect, uh, Autodesk Seek, Revit, SketchUp, where we have, um, all of our all of our products involved into these programs so you're getting a seamless hatch pattern for masonry veneer specifically so for a designer uh, we have a designer in here so is there a program that you're using to design homes or interiors exteriors what are you using okay okay Okay, so you know SketchUp is a free download for the most, you know, um, and we can you can utilize our veneer masonry uh, with the um, Fond du Lac Chilton web wall as a uh, stepper, as a look. So if they're looking at, you know, you can put it on a horizontal surface to get that visual if you really want uh, to give an idea. Um, or utilizing our tailored blends as a um, sawn patio stone you know, to give it an idea of what it would look like so just ideas so but bit of, you know building information modeling you know this is what we're talking about here with the sketchup the chief architect Revit uh, getting a an idea of what it's going to look like before you start building so takes the guesswork out of everything for us and here's a here's a project that we did. Uh, this particular customer came into our showroom in Fond du Lac, spent multiple days and countless hours going back and forth between products that we offered, and couldn't make up her mind. She just couldn't see it on her house. We asked her, and we started talking to her about, you know, who's your designer? Who are you using? And the designer um, actually assisted us, and she went in started putting some of the veneer stones onto her home in her program, which was chief architect, and gave the customer, the client, 13 different versions to visualize. And she made her decision based on that visual. Um, being able to see the general look of the home was the one, that the, the one piece that made her decision so easy. She couldn't see it based on our, our four by four panels that we had in our, in our showroom. So. Most people. Yeah. Can't visualize it. Exactly. It's always a big deal. Yep. So just another another option here that she put up their Buff Bray Castle Rock. So this next video 
just real short, but it shows you how technology is improving and how it, you know, it's getting so detailed. This is in SketchUp, uh, I'm sorry, Chief uh, Autodesk Seek Revit, where they have the veneer stone, they had, you know, the, the tables, the countertops, the, the wine bottles, uh, the lighting, the ceilings, the floors, everything's in this program where they can see exactly what they're looking for. Um, so this is what's coming, you know, as time goes on, this is, this is going to make your, your job a little easier. You're going to know exactly what they're trying to achieve, um, hopefully, with, with this technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a project that I worked on in Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota, <laughs> where they were looking at putting the base course, the material, as our Cabin Creek River Rock. And they were looking at, you know, different options. You know, how do we create a rake joint or a, an overgrout look? Uh, so these, these you know, programs can allow you for multiple different looks as far as masonry veneer goes as well. And give you a three different, you know, three D look to the project. We also have you know architect binders available. More and more often, I don't see people using these anymore. Everyone's going right to the right to the website for information. Um, but these are still available as well if anyone's using them. So last year. Late last year, we did launch a new website. So this is the, the front of our website, uh, the only real choice in natural stone. We have it segregated by building stone veneers, cut stone veneers, landscape stone, and then the Beagle bio, which I went through at the beginning of the presentation here. But we also note that on the, on the bottom of the, of the page, you see the chat piece. So uh, live chat's always there to help you if, if you have questions. If you're looking through the website, trying to get information, you're not finding what you're looking for, that live chat is there, and typically we'll just you know gather your your contact information. One of the sales reps will call you right away to get you what you need. So quick shots of the website, and then so if I'm going into building stone veneers, it's going to lay out the different patterns that we produce the stone in, and if I'm looking at like an ashlar pattern. It's going to take me into the different options for the Ashler products that we produce. And then from this point, you can select it by product filter. So you can select it by color. So if you want all fiery reds, or if you want uh, sky blues, or if you want uh, Arctic whites, it's going to tell you, it'll, it'll sort out and select the material that's in that range. But if I'm looking at like Chilton Rustic, for instance, you're going to get a nice big photo of, of the material close up. It's also going to give you the spec information, where it's just a click away on the SDM standards or into this link here. So if you want to download it, you can click right, at, right there. You have a, a list of project photos that you can scroll through. And then again, live chat is right there for you if you have any questions that come up while looking. Um, and then for architects, we have all the BIM information, CAD modeling, right there to download. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so did you everyone hear that? So yeah, our Chilton Rustic. This is one of our veneer products. That would be like a Chilton Weathered Edge for the landscape stone or retaining wall stone or outcroppings. Yep. Or steps. Same same material. Those veneers about an inch or so? Yeah, about an inch thick. Yep. Three quarter to three uh, inch and a quarter thick. And then we do full veneer too, which is three to five or even three to six with some of the new material. Uh, one thing we did add was a brag book this past, you know, with this new launch of the website. Our brag book is just ideas. So if you're looking for ideas, we have a lot of landscape options, you know, just photos of projects that we've done just to give ideas of what can you do. And we break it down, you know, we have, you know, retail buildings, retaining walls, schools and universities, signs stone and brick projects, stone and siding projects, stone and stucco projects, uh, unique landscape and, and fireplace options, walkways, patios, you name it, it, it's all there right in our brag book and our brag book is on the very bottom of our website front page.
then just this past, you know, a few weeks ago, we launched our new literature. So our new literature, what you guys have right in front of you, uh, featuring a mason putting on a wall, uh, segregating the veneers. You have a full stone veneer, thin veneer, costing, you know, where how it lays out the pricing. Um, not giving you actual square foot pricing or anything, but just giving you an idea of, of the cost of the material in general. And then the colors associated with the product. Talking about sustainability, the patterns, the specifications. A lot of detail in this in this piece of literature. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we talked about that too. So then the cut stone, you know, I passed around a few cut stone pieces. Uh, we now have eight different options for finishes for cut stone. So there's a lot of different textures and patterns that you can put on this to create something very unique. Uh, the two new ones that we added were burnished, which is a brushed and thermaled finish, and then velour, which is a bush hammered and brushed option. So just two different visuals, two different textures that you can put on your stones. Uh, so that's another option. We we make sure that we, um, if you're looking at a thermal, for instance, there's only certain there's only a certain number of stones that we carry that will handle a flame at 4,000 degrees. So we have that listed as far as if you're going to use a thermal finish. You know, we'll make recommendations. We can't do this with every single product, but it's all listed in the literature as well. And then the landscape stone, you know, we have all of the different options, the landscape stone, the boulders, the outcroppings, the, the retaining wall stone, the patio stone, the flags, the flagstone steppers, everything's in our landscape section. You actually sell stone too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then here is Bree Lizaway, our our director of marketing. Um, you may have heard this already, but in case you didn't, we have redesigned our literature. It's completely brand new. Um, and I just want to take this opportunity to show you a few points of interest along it. When we begin, we see the Y people, which goes over a few case breakers for choosing our stone over others. And our content. You can see we split the organization into lines, beginning with abstract, and we can see chapter are dimensional, and so on, all the way to landscape. And we, of course, have our beautiful bio included. Here we have some project photos divided up by residential, interiors, fireplaces, and commercial projects. Throughout those project photos, you notice that there are some full quotes. And these come from our true stories section. There are seven stories throughout our literature and they're also noted on our content page. On our building stone veneer title page, we go over the difference between full and veneer and much more. Then we come into our ashlar line. All of our swatches are organized by color tones, from warm, fiery tones to cool arctic tones. New features in our swatches include adding price range, bronze being the lowest, and platinum being the highest. We included our new line, Taylor Field Ledge, in our literature. Taylor Field Ledge has a specific sawn height of 2 inch, 4 inch, and 6 inch, perfect for a contemporary look on your project. Our cut stone section has been spruced up as well, including all applicable finishes that are available to each stone. Last but not least, our landscape stone section. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the new literature. Reach out to us on social media at Beagle Stone. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you love our new literature as much as we do. Okay. So that is the presentation. Um, if there's any questions, you guys have any questions on the material or anything we went over today? Nope. Well, thank you for your time, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming. Um, 
yeah, if you have any questions for me, I'll be standing around and shaking hands, kissing babies. Yeah. <laughs>